All right. We're back. You know, of late, we keep hearing about how churches refuse to allow people to speak and educate the congregants within those churches because they don't want to um, cross the line of government uh, separation of church and state, which is a misnomer to begin with. But I've got to tell you, there are churches that are actively working against the best interests of their own congregants in this nation. And they have been <clears throat> co-opted, corrupted. They are being used to manipulate their own congregations into meeting the goals of this fascist dictatorship that we are currently living in. You can disagree with me as to all you want as to whether or not we've entered it or it's pending or I'm completely off the mark. But I've got to tell you, only time will tell. And there will be a day when America will say he was right. And the churches are working actively, as they have always done historically, I might add, to support and assist in that perversion. A Catholic university has announced Georgetown University, and this this will blow you away. Excuse me. Washington, D.C.-based private Catholic university is slated to offer a class next semester that ex- that's going to teach students how to promote and protect abortion coverage provided under the Affordable Care Act. Now, I got to tell you, I'm not Catholic. But I know that abortion is one of the preeminent pillars or, or uh, pro-life, I should say, is one of the preeminent pillars of the Catholic Church. Their anti-abortive stance is known worldwide. And yet, here is a university that is Catholic in its origins and is Catholic in its day-in and day-out presentation of itself to the world. On its face, it says, we are a Catholic private university. And we teach the, the Catholic doctrine. And yet they're expected to teach students how to promote and, and protect the abortion coverage that is provided under Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. Really? The course is called Regulatory Advocacy, Women and the Affordable Care Act. And it's set to be taught at Georgetown Law. The Catholic Education Daily, it's, a, it's an organization, and the society's president, uh, Patrick Riley, here's what he has to say. We have long warned about Georgetown, Georgetown scandals that undermine the church's strong defense of innocent life. But here, students are being required to work for a pro-abortion lobby, making America's oldest Catholic university an active agent of the culture of death. Now, those of you who know me and listen to me on a routine basis, I don't technically get into the the abortion thing uh, other than to say I I don't like abortion. I don't stand for it. I am pro-life. But there are a couple of exceptions where I believe it's appropriate, and that is rape and that is incest. And there are those who may disagree with me, and we can have that discussion on an intellectual level all you like on a moral level as well. But the truth of the matter is that, you know, to me, abortion is not a, a, a hinge pin. It's a symptom of the decline of the United States of America. But when you have churches that are betraying their congregations and their own system of beliefs, it's betrayal 
of their own system of beliefs and their commitment to their God. And that is a treason that generally is reserved for the title unpardonable sin. I don't care who or what you believe in. I don't care who or what you do. But if you betray that which you profess to believe in, if you betray that which you use as the guide to live your life by, I have to tell you, the price that will be extracted for that treason will be commensurate with its act. And that I do believe. And whether it's, you know, at some point in in time in in a, in a future after you've passed from this life I, I, or whether it's karma in, during the life I, I don't even care and I don't even want to contemplate it what i am saying is this that deed will not go unpunished that level of betrayal that level of treason personal i mean you can't get a more personal intimate treason than betraying that which you believe philosophically and religiously, to me, that is incomprehensible. This, this, this issue with this university, this falls right in line with the DHS's clergy response teams. The Department of Homeland Security has been out there pitching and promoting and training these doctors i mean i'm sorry these doctors these um uh churches and the and these uh clergy leaders to educate their their uh um their flocks by being community organizers and they're 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 trying to do two things in the clergy response teams they are giving these uh, pastors and these clergy across the country training on how to, when civil unrest occurs, how to keep their, their uh, constituencies and their, <clears throat> their congregations under control to acquiesce to government, uh, government rule for all, for all effectiveness. These clergy response teams are so dangerous to the inherent concept of what what we believe. They are being trained to quell dissent. And these are church organizations that are going to, you know, sit there and tell the, from the pulpit their congregations to acquiesce and be pacified to to do not stand up and 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 in the event of a declaration of martial law i mean this is not me talking this is a may 2006 story that's been going on since then folks fema and dhs <clears throat> training pastors and religious representatives to become secret police enforcers who teach their congregations to quote obey the government in preparation of a declaration of martial law, property, and firearm seizures and forced relocation. KSLA News actually did a report on this about how clergy response teams are being trained by the federal government to quell dissent and pacify their citizens to obey the government in the, in the event of a declaration of martial law. The Worldwide Church of God based out of California, that has 64,000 members and 860 congregations in over 90 countries. They were asked if any of their pastors were were involved in the clergy response team programs. Here's what they said. The head office quickly replied hastily within an hour when they were were questioned by uh, the, the KSLA TV story. Sorry, that's privileged information, was their response. The reply was in big, bold script like I've never seen before in emails. It's also a bit bit put off by the word privileged. I responded to the stated email and reworded my request slightly by demanding, are there any of our pastors on the payroll of FEMA? Yes or no? This was someone within the church itself. Their first response came after about an hour. 
but it had been almost 24 hours and I'm still waiting for my church's second response to my second request. The truth of the matter is, that's only one example. When we're talking about churches that are willing to, um, and, and they're being trained now to teach and preach health care and Obamacare from the pulpit, the community organizers are joining pastors across the country to educate and help parishioners sign up for Obamacare. The coordinated initiative called Health Care from the Pulpit is being implemented by Enroll America, a not-for-profit organization with the goal of maximizing, quote, the number of uninsured Americans who enroll in health coverage made available by the Affordable Care Act. They are actually going in and asking and, and being allowed to, to preach at, at churches I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to me. They're asking congregants when they go to these churches and talk about it to fill out cards with basic information about themselves or, get a hold of this one, people they know who might be in need of health care. The soft informant. You see, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. The government knows and understands the principle of community organization. And they recognize that ministers, pastors and clergy, priests and, and imams, and, and, and they recognize that these people are trusted within their communities. They recognize that they are the original community organizers. And they're co-opting and subverting their mission. They, they they say it willingly. Quote, this is from this is from Enroll America. Quote, pastors are trusted messengers. They'll be able to get the story across. They'll be able to relate to that story. And they'll be able to ask people to enroll in health insurance. That is not the job of the church. The truth is, the church has sold itself out for the, for the benefits of 501c3 tax exemption. And while on one hand, they'll do anything to protect that 501c3 exemption by not allowing anyone to talk about politics within their church, they're willing to accede and acquiesce to that themselves as long as it's tied to the tail of their own tax exemption, as long as it protects it. And I got to tell you, folks, the church leaders and the shepherds who are willing to lead their flocks up onto the firing line, they're engaged in a level of treason that is unspeakable. You want to define the unpardonable sin? There it is. Those who would betray their own beliefs, those who would betray that which they live their lives upon, and worse yet, those who would betray those others underneath their care. America wonders why the great falling away of belief has occurred. I just gave you your answer. You've been listening to America's Voice now. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to tackle our third topic, dependency on government and how it is creating a, an addiction to slavery. 
the level of addiction in this nation to free this and free that and apathy in general is beyond is beyond compare. Never in our history have we ever seen anything like this. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to America's Voice Now. You can find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now and on youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Stick with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 